Hi guys, I'm Shmi, and today I'm gonna go for a run out in the Schmini, a car that's kind of been unloved recently, and in fact, I just had to install a new battery in it because not really driving it very much turns out to have not done very well for it. At least it's not the most expensive thing in the world, but that's now up and running, and it's gonna appear a little bit more in the coming videos. Now I'm gonna head over to Dub Customs. Two reasons for going there. The first is the new car, the Vanquish Volante. Now you might already have seen that I've probably, prior to this video, revealed that car it's all being filmed a little bit backwards but I dropped it off the other day they started stripping it down I didn't actually see any of the wrap being done but today it should kind of be half wrapped a little bit carbon black the standard color and a little bit of the Schmi blue the gloss blue metallic that sort of signature kind of color that's a bit like the LT coupe was cerulean blue now we're gonna catch up with that but also the second reason for the visit is my manager mark to go alongside his m2 has bought a mini GP2. So we're gonna catch up with his GP2. It's a bit of a pace car. It's been wrapped with quite a cool little livery and design on it, but it's also a very unique custom spec mini. So mini fans out there are probably gonna quite appreciate this one. So I'm gonna jump in the Schmini. We'll get on the road, go to Dub Customs, take a look at the Vanquish, then we'll take a look at the mini GP2 as well. Now it's not that surprising given how little I've driven the Mini recently that the battery went, but it was pretty easy to change. It's just under this sort of carpet in the boot floor, then under that box you see there. So I've installed the most powerful battery that I could find that works in here. Hopefully that will last quite well going forward, but if I need to change it again in the future, it's not a big disaster. I've only started it once since I changed it though. So let's uh, jump in and give this a go, see if it works. I had to reconnect the immobilizer. That all seems to be completely fine. Let's um, bring it into life. There we go, immediately, nice quick start. Perfect. I do need some fuel though. A little bit of a cold start process at the moment, but all seems to be well. Let's hope it keeps running. For now though, I'm gonna get on the road. So I will catch up with you again when I'm at Dub Customs. Some might say I should probably have taken the GT8 today, but I'm saving driving the GT8 and the Vanquish together until the day I actually collect the Vanquish, which is gonna be the video that you've probably already seen. So that's coming up quite soon as well. For now, onwards. And here we have the Vanquish. So Dub have already done a couple of parts, as you can see, the doors, the side skirts, the A-pillars, the bonnet, the main part of the front bumper, and also those kind of lower, that lower bit at the front as well, which sits underneath the carbon splitter. This is all coming together very nicely. This color, well, if you've been watching for a while, you will know it. It's been around for a bit. We've used it on quite a few cars before now, but it's really starting to make this look very, very good. I diamond cut the wheels, as I talked about before, at Posh Wash. So the car came with full black wheels, but I wanted the sort of half uh, dual tone finish, which is an option from the factory, but not how this car was before. But then when you take that and you combine it with all the sort of carbon around the bottom of the car, the doors and the skirts, then with that sort of contrast of the blue against the carbon, it all looks really quite nice. And then the interior too, with the white stitch uh, and embroidery on the headdress. But one thing about Vanquish that I really like I don't know if I've shown you this up to this point, is all the body panels are carbon fiber, and if you come underneath, you can actually see the raw carbon um, here under the bonnet as well. Um, but literally, it basically means be very careful because the whole car is carbon. There's clearly still a bit more to go, although not that much. The boot, the bumper, the four quarters, the two rear wings, uh, and the two front ones as well. You can see it sort of masked off to keep away some of the dust. That is, by the way, if you're wondering why there's red under here, it's to keep the dust of the engine bay away from the wrap so that you don't get kind of bubbles or anything rippling or causing a problem to the effect of it. But this mirror's been put back on. It's all looking very good, and I cannot wait to get this outside when it's finished. Although by this point, you guys have hopefully already seen it. Anyway, I'm gonna go find Mark to talk us round GP2. To explain this more then, it's Mark. Hello. How's it going? Mark's been in videos before. We've yep. done quite a few trips in his M2, but this is the new addition to his stable, and I don't know too much about minis, so I needed Mark's help, basically, to fill us all in and talk about it, and this is not standard, so... No, I keep it short, especially, because I can talk really, really long about it. <laughs> uh, first of all, the design, uh, which is a mixture of all kinds of designs, uh, a bit mini heritage. Um, first of all, um, the aluminium look, is similar mm -hmm. to the JCW concept with the red uh, roof. 
Mm -hmm. um, only it's uh, on the JCW concept. It's a white stripe, and we used aluminium. Yeah, matches through nicely. Yeah. And the red carries through to that, which is painted, right? No, 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 it's wrapped. Um, okay. We had it wrapped, we wrapped it again to make sure that the color are the same, because there was okay. a slight difference in color. Um, another thing which we've done is uh, the side stripe you see here um, is a bit of a, like a, the challenge stripe, which, uh, which Mini uses. Um, comes from the JCW Roadster, uh, mm -hmm. from the second generation Roadster. Um, we're not done yet, yet because there's some logos coming in as well. Um, we put uh, the GP number, um, yep. How many GPs are there? 2,000. Um, on the first generation GP, everybody had a number on the roof. Uh, second generation, there was no number anymore. And there's a lot of mini fans who have GP2s that put the number back on the roof. So I wanted okay. to put that back as well. Um, there's a big 37 number on the sides uh, and on the rear as well in the, uh, when the design is done. And that refers back to the uh, first Monte Carlo uh, rally uh, win with a classic mini. And the car that won had that number on the car. So it's really mm -hmm. a famous number. There's a lot of current new minis and editions of it that carry that number. So it's really okay. famous. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Things that aren't standard. That's not standard. No, this is for a scoop from Leap, um, which is not a standard scoop. The standard scoop is gone, so we replaced this scoop. Uh, offers more air into the uh, cold air intake, which is inside. Uh, we can go into the engine bay. Let's have a look. Let's open it. Yes. As you can see, this that is also not standard, standard anymore. <laughs> this is not standard anymore at all. So we have a fully functional uh, scoop now, which has a tunnel here, which brings the air into the cold air intake, which brings it into the turbo. Um, this is not standard. Normally, a scoop on a Mini or a new Mini isn't functional. Um, oh, yeah, they're just visual, aren't they? Mostly visual. They're open. They bring air into the engine compartment, but not directly into in the, in the engine. Okay. So um, with this, it is the case. Um, also, uh, change the strut brace because the Standard strut base doesn't fit anymore, so you mm -hmm. have to get an AM okay. strut base and a cold intake together. So it doesn't fit. Uh, carbon Mini supplied a um, carbon engine cover, which is quite nice. And uh, next to that, there are some forge uh, silicon hoses and a forge intercooler, which you can't see, which is underneath. Mm -hmm. uh, engine power currently 266 horsepower, 322 newton meters, which is quite a decent uh, amount more. That's a lot when you think about it, it's just through the front wheels. Yeah, and it's only less than 1,200 kilos, the car, so yeah. we weighted it. Um, the current setup of the suspension and setup is mostly set up for one person driving. So okay. um, not for two people, even though there are two seats in the car. Um, we did the, uh, the setup with, um, with only one person. And um, you feel the difference, you know, uh, I've been driving with Joe as well. And uh, with two people in the car, there's definitely a difference with, uh, with one person in the car. You feel the additional weight to you with an additional, additional person. Yeah, the um, only other thing that's standing out to me is tow hook. Yeah, you put a tow hook <laughs> on it as well. Uh, common thing with mini drivers, put doing a tow hook mm -hmm. on there. Um, then we get to the inside. Pop carbon handles. Yeah, carbon handles, also new. Carbon uh, mirror caps and carbon interior parts, which are just shells over the existing parts. Oh, okay. Um, which, is, uh, which gives the interior just a better look. This, yeah, not normal. Uh, not normal at all. Uh, it's a KE short shifter. So I didn't change the gearbox. The gearbox stays the same. A lot of people think that I put in uh, a different gearbox as well, um, similar to in your. Instinctively, you think it's a sequential, like yeah, there yeah, is yeah. In, the, uh, in the race car, in the, the race challenge car. race car, <laughs> which is not the case. It's it's just a standard. It's just making the throw a lot shorter. Um, and people say, yeah, then, but the, the stick is much longer. So then the the, the shorter throw is gone. Uh, it's just shorter to the steering wheel as well. So just because yeah. race car. Feel uh, more like a race car. It feels minutes. like a sequential when you're driving yeah, it, I yeah. imagine, even though it's not. And I can tell you, everyone that drives it comes out of it and wants it and comes out and steps out of the car with a smile and it says, <laughs> I want that system in my car as well. You can get it on other cars as well. It's not Mini only, you can put, yeah. you can put it in a BMW as well. And you had to completely custom make this yeah. whole yeah. thing. You, you, the thing is, is not that the biggest thing of the, the installation is not so much putting the shifter in, it's making sure that that plastic piece fits around yeah, it. Yeah. Um, um, other things... Um, I'm just going to point out for people who don't know that there are no back seats in a GP2. No. You just have a, a, a strut bar across no. and some yeah. space. Yeah. Uh, other thing is that uh, seats are different. There's a custom-made steering wheel with Alcantara and leather. Um, phone holder, which is sp uh, special from Craven Speed. Put your phone exactly next to the Tacho, which is a, is a nice uh, extra as well. And um, yeah, and then at the back, uh, of course, for everybody noticeable, uh, there's an aircraft exhaust system, 
Oh, which isn't the loudest system which is available for the Mini. So uh, I might put a, a cutlass uh, downpipe in the future in the car to make it a bit more <laughs> poppy and uh, <laughs> make it more noisy. Downpipe sounds a lot noisier to me. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, and then yeah, the last thing, which is in, in my case the most important thing for a Mini, suspension. Mm-hmm. Um, power isn't the most important thing with a Mini. Um, it's mostly making it feel like a go-kart. Mm-hmm. Um, the GP2 has a lot of opportunities to make it a lot better. Uh, what we've done is we, uh, the suspension system all around has been changed. There's now an um, AST uh, suspension setup with top mounts, so we can put a bit of camber on it. On the front wheels, we have additional uh, bushings, which give you more caster, so you mm-hmm. have a better turn-in. Um, the wheels are super lights from ATS. Uh, I have two sets of those uh, for winters and for summers. And at the rear, there's a sway bar. So uh, this car really steers in a lot better than the standard car, which is uh, a lot of fun. Well, at some point, it's going to be leading a line with a whole bunch of cars like these behind it. So no pressure. No, not at all. Not <laughs> at all. I hope it can, uh, it can be a good lead uh, in that, yeah. Play it safe. Don't get in, in trouble. Yep. Save everyone else from trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it will be fun. So there we have it. Mark's Mini GP2 the pace car. I just came outside to get ready to wrap up and head home when I noticed there was something a little bit suspicious and wrong about my car. I don't know if you've spotted it yet, but it's missing a front number plate. I have no idea where it's gone, when it's fallen off or what's happened, but I don't have a front number plate anymore on the Schmini. I don't know why, I don't know how, but I will replace it and stick a new one on as soon as I can get one. Most odd thing ever, you can literally see the remains of the sticky pads where it was held on, but presumably I've caught it on a bump um, and it's just torn it straight off who knows but i will sort that out as quickly as i can for now though the light is going down as you can see it's been cool to catch up an update with the vanquish as it's in progress being completed in the shmi blue here at dub customs and also see the mini gp2 from mark which we're going to see a bit more of with my car in the future so stay tuned for that we'll drive the two cars out together at some point as soon as we can we'll go over a little bit more about the gp2 itself as well Anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up for there. Now, thank you very much for watching as always. I'm sorry for the wind out here. I just thought it was funny that the number plate had gone and I wanted to show you. I need to go and get that sorted out now, but I will catch up with you again very soon. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you then. Cheers.